Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start getting everything out of the packaging here. Um, everything arrived as it should have. Nothing was damaged. Um, the UPS package was pretty beat up, so it was nice to see that everything showed up as it should have. You can see we've got everything packaged here in its own individual box. They didn't cut any corners with the packaging. Uh, we've got our PCB, our drivers, some wire, port tubes, and our flat pack all in the same packaging. We've got our flat pack here. Um, apart from a few footprints, everything showed up just like it should have. Um, what makes this really nice is we're not going to have to do any sanding on our edges before we get started. They've all been cleaned up beforehand and you can just see a bunch of nice clean edges here. No damage, no tear out, nothing like that. We're just ready to dive right into it and get started with the glue up. So that's what we're going to do next. Next up, let's take a look at the drivers we're going to be working with. Um, so we've got our woofer here and our tweeter. These both feel like really quality components. The woofer's got a lot of weight to it. You can tell that the magnet is going to have quite a bit of motor force. Just a regular stamp steel basket here. This is a Dayton audio driver. Nice little rubber surround. Stamp steel basket. Really pretty cone there um, with a nice little matching dust cap. Um, just looks really clean. Um, no complaints at all. Moving on to the tweeter here. Um, you can see we've got some heat sinks on the back. Um, a Dayton Audio brand once again. Um, we've got our waveguide here on the front and some countersink screws um, for a nice finished edge. And we've got our port tubes. It's going to be adjustable for adjustable tuning. Um, we are going to be setting ours at around 7 inches and we'll go over the tuning here in just a little bit. We've got our PCB here. This makes it really easy to get the crossover put together. You can see we've got some holes for zip ties to help secure the components to the board. And then we've got all of our components themselves here, capacitors, inductors, terminals. These are gold plated. They feel really nice in the hand, um, really easy to work with. So sitting here, I've just kind of got everything mocked up, sitting in place as it will eventually be. Hope you get a better understanding of kind of what order to nail things together, clamp things together. Um, you can see most of our edges are going to be butt joints with the exception of the rear. First up, just going to go ahead and start the glue up process. You want to use plenty of glue. I'm using Type Bond 3 here. You can definitely use Type Bond 1 or 2. Um, just want to make sure that you get all that glue over the edge and don't skimp out. This is really what's holding our enclosure together at the end of the day. I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch brad nail on this material here. You do not have to. You could clamp this and leave it and it's going to be just as strong. This is mostly just for the sake of being able to work a little more quickly so that I'm not waiting for each individual side to dry before moving on. Again, getting the glue spread out, taking my time, lining up all the corners. This is one of the most important parts of the build. And then as I get each corner done, I'm gonna go ahead and just double down, add a little more glue to the inside. This is both gonna help with strength and it's gonna guarantee that we have a good airtight seal so that we're not getting any chuffing or leakage, uh, anything that's gonna cause any problems in the frequency response. And I'm just spreading this around with the finger Use a little bit more than you think you would. Um, never gonna hurt. Last step here is going to be to glue on our front baffle. Again, we're going to apply glue liberally, just like all of our other sides here. Going to get it squared up here with our roundovers. We're going to go ahead and tack it down. 
And lastly, before we move forward with the veneer, we're gonna go ahead and fill all of our brad holes. These do not need to be perfect. We just wanna get enough material in there that we can sand down to a smooth finish. This is really gonna help the veneer adhere. We don't want any air bubbles getting into our finish. With a better angle here, we're gonna go ahead and glue up our second baffle. Again, applying this glue very liberally, this is what's gonna do all of the holding. And we're just gonna shoot a few brads right through the front and fill those once again, just like we did before. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and drop those in front of the fan for a few hours, let them dry out and cure, and then we're ready for sanding. All right, last step before we get to sanding, we're gonna go ahead and drill our terminal holes. You can see I've marked our center here, and then I'm spacing these about an inch apart. You can go a little further if you want. I would recommend going just a little bit higher than I did, as it's gonna make it a little easier to insert your terminal wires once you're ready for that part. In our next step, we're gonna go ahead and do our sanding here. I'm gonna start off with 220. Now, you see the technique I'm using here is holding the sander perfectly flat and parallel to the plane that I'm sanding. We do not wanna round over any of the edges here as we're gonna be applying veneer later and that would be a disaster. So just hold your sander nice and straight, um, especially as you go over your edges. We just want a nice clean working surface here. We're not rounding anything over. And then before we move forward, I'm just gonna take some 400 grit here and dust off our edges here. You can see that round over on the front, we're not going over that edge, we're just cleaning everything up a bit here. We're gonna take our brush, get all that dust off there, and then after that, I'm gonna actually use um, an air compressor. All right, so next up, we're gonna move on to the veneer. Now you can see that I'm using a napped roller here. I'm just gonna apply this contact cement very liberally. Um, I'm gonna roll it on nice and even. Do not skimp on this step either. We're gonna roll it onto both the veneer and our enclosure one side at a time. We're gonna allow this to tack up. So we're not applying this right away. We're gonna let our glue cure and then we're going to roll it on into place. Um, we're gonna get every bit of air out that we can and at the end, I like to just give it a nice firm press. Uh, make sure that that glue has a good chance to adhere. Every last bit of it has had some pressure applied to it. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and start to trim our edges. This part, you're just gonna to have to use your best judgment. I like to go about a 16th up to the edge. We are not trying to get too close that we scar the veneer that's on our finished side here um, because the next thing we're gonna do is take a flat block of some sort and sand these edges down. So we're not concerned with trying to get so close that we start to gouge our finished edge. Um, and cause any damage. It's just unnecessary. It'll be much easier to sand this down than try to get right up to the edge with a razor blade. You can see how, how much material I'm leaving on before we move on to sanding. Not very much, but just enough that we're not having to get super close to our finished edge again and go back and have to patch or fix anything. You can see here, I've got a package of shims. Anything that's square and flat is able to be used for this. We, again, do not want to round over any of our edges. The goal here is just to clean up that edge until it's nice and flat so we can mate our other surface here. And once we're done with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit all this veneer with some 400 grit, get all the uh, little stickies off there, and then get them cleaned up again before we start to stain. And then we're just gonna move on to some mineral spirits here and really give it a good clean. This is what's gonna get all those little particulate off there. 
staining here is really straightforward. I'm using an espresso from the Home Depot brand. This is oil based. We're just going to wipe this on liberally and then we're going to wipe away the excess. We just want to make sure we get everything evenly covered here at first and then we're going to use a clean rag to wipe away all of the excess here. We're not pressing too hard. We're going to let this dry out for a few hours afterward before we begin our poly. So just want to get all the excess off. All right, moving on to one of the final steps here for our finish. We're going to use an oil-based polyurethane. I'm using a high gloss. Again, we're going to apply this very liberally. We're going to be smoothing this out. That's the whole goal here is to get everything evenly coated. I'm going to start toward the center and work my way out to the edges. Now, you're going to use enough that it's going to run over the edges. That's okay. We just want to wipe away immediately any runs that we find. And then after we've got everything evenly applied here, I'm going over with equal pressure very, very lightly just enough that this brush smooths everything out. While our first layer of poly is drying up here, I'm going to go ahead and populate the PCB. We're going to bend the legs of all of our components at a nice angle that they slide right into this PCB. Populate everything at once. Get everything zip tied down. You can use hot glue if you choose. It doesn't really matter as long as they're secure to the board. This is how your final product should look here. Got everything nice and organized here. We're just going to go ahead and solder each component. Take your time with this. We want nice, clean, and hot solder joints here. We don't want any cold joints that we're going to have to pull this back out and make any corrections. Moving on here, we're going to go ahead and start stripping our wire for our leads and our terminal. This is probably going to be my only complaint about the entire kit, is the insulation on this wire was really a pain to work with. Once we've got it stripped, we're going to go ahead and twist it up and get it soldered to our PCB here. Pay attention to the markings on the PCB. They are not very intuitive, so just pay attention to where you're placing each piece of wire. And then this is how you should look. Next up, we're going to go ahead and crimp some terminals onto our wire here. I'm using the same gauge for everything. Moving on to our last coat of polyurethane, we're going to use the same technique here, going over everything nice and evenly, one nice even coat. Again, I'm only using the weight of the brush to make this last pass to help smooth everything out. Once our poly is cured, we're going to go ahead and insert our crossover board here and get that secured down to our terminals and glued down to the floor. Our next step here is going to be to measure out our port length. I'm going to go ahead and glue that in place. You can use hot glue or super glue. If you're going to use hot glue, you want to make sure you've got a nice airtight seal. I'm going to go ahead and make some pilot holes for our port tube here. Then we're going to go ahead and screw it into place. You can see I'm just using the drill to hand torque these down. We don't want to overdo it. Put around to the front here, we're going to go ahead and connect our drivers. I'm going to start with our tweeter here. Make sure we've got some really snug connections there. Once we're done, we're going to go ahead and drop them into place and get them lined up before we make our next pilot holes. We want to make sure everything looks nice and aligned here. And then we're going to go ahead and make some pilot holes very carefully. And again, I'm going to use the torque of the drill by hand for that last little bit. We don't want to overdo this. This MDF can be really soft and easy to strip out. So I'm just going by hand here. It makes things a lot more safe. So I'm just going to give some final thoughts here. 
You can see the finish that we achieved on these is pretty remarkable. Under $200, I really, really don't see how you could beat this. With that wave guided tweeter, the imaging is so precise. It compares to speakers that cost 10 times more than this in my own experience. Bass output is respectable. Let's talk about who this kit might be for. If you've got all of the supplies and tools to throw one of these together, they represent an incredible value. Um, I think you're going to easily have to spend around $1,000 to $1,500 to get this level of finish and sound quality. Construction quality, subjectively, these sound really good to me. I'm not going to go into all the details about exactly what I think. I just want to say that I think they do sound incredible. These kits look amazing. You could choose to do these in several finishes. If you just needed a mini monitor of some sort, you could throw a coat of paint on here or you could leave them bare. There's so many options. If you want to spend 50 bucks, you can really take these over the top with some walnut veneer. Really any kind of veneer is going to make these pop. And it's a super fun project. These are so easy to put together and very forgiving. Um, and the finishes are limitless. So my plan moving forward is going to be to build every speaker kit on Parts Express's website. If you want to see more builds like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's going to be so many more to come. We're going to do everything on Parts Express website. We're going to start with the bookshelves and make our way up to the floor standing loudspeakers. If you made it to the end. I really appreciate you watching this far and we'll see you next time.